What is up YouTube, it is Zol and we're back with another video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to mix your vocals using only Ableton stock audio effects. So if you have Ableton, you'll be able to follow along exactly and get the exact mix that I give my vocals. And if you use a different DAW like Fruity Loops or Logic, the audio effects that I'm using are very general, so your DAW is probably gonna have audio effects exactly like mine, so you'll be able to get a pretty similar mix as well. What is up? It is Zol from the future, here with Buddy. Everyone say hello to Buddy. Just wanted to say that I understand that this video is very long. I am in no way expecting you to watch the whole video. In this video, I talk about how I mix my vocals with my Zol vocal template. I talk about how I mix my background vocals. I talk about how to make vocal sweeps and I talk about how to use vocal doubling. So in the description of this video, there are timestamps separating the video out. So if you maybe just wanted to check out how to mix background vocals, then you can just click on that and it'll take you right there. In my last video, I made a beat using strictly sounds from my newest sound pack, my Indie Wave sound pack. And I ended up singing over that beat and that is the song that I'm gonna be showing y'all today. The song is on SoundCloud if you want to check out the full song. So let me give you a quick teaser of the song that I'm going to be showing y'all. All right, here is the track, and the first thing that you probably notice is, you know, where's the beat? But a big thing that I suggest to you if you don't already do this is to export your beat and then just throw in the audio in one single track because the project that I made this beat with, it's filled with a lot of different audio effects, a lot of different instruments, some third-party plugins and stuff like that. So if I was to just keep that beat and all those instruments and drums and stuff and then record these vocals with even more audio effects um, for the mixing, then my CPU would just, you know, kind of go crazy and it would glitch out my Ableton and it'd be hard to record, it'd be hard to mix and everything. So here's our beat. Let's solo it. All right, so there's our beat. I say we just start with the main vocals. So here are our main vocals. I have a group, and this is my auto-tune, and then this is the template that I'm gonna be walking you through. Let's just turn off the template, turn off the auto-tune, and let's give a listen to these vocals with the beat. So as you can tell, it's really difficult to hear the vocals and you know, they don't sound crisp and whatnot. So we're gonna throw on the auto-tune and then the template and you're just gonna tell how much of a difference this template makes. Not only does this template, you know, boost your vocals volume but it also clears it up and gives it some space so this template is so nice if you make it you can save it and then you can just paste it on whenever you're recording vocals all right and you probably recognize this little sweep that i have and that paired with our main vocals I thought... so i'm going to be showing y'all how to make this little vocal sweep later on in the video but i say we just walk through this template i'm going to show y'all exactly how to make this. So I'm gonna drag this group down here, and then we're gonna drag these up here. So now we can mainly just be focused on 
the main vocals and the beat. This main vocals group, it's a group of tracks. So what I did is I just inserted two tracks. Well, we don't want them to be inside the group. There we go. I inserted two tracks like this. And then what I did is I just clicked one, held down control, clicked the other one. So now both of them are selected. And then I did control G. And now this group has two audio tracks in it. And the reason I did that is because I don't want to um, you know, record a line with this audio track and then record a line with this audio track and have the template on both of these tracks because that would, again, boost my CPU and it would make my Ableton glitchy. So what I do is I group them and that allows me to just throw in my auto-tune and then throw in my template and that makes both of these audio tracks affected by the auto-tune and the vocal template. So there we go. I'm going to mute this group right here. We'll talk about that later. But the chorus is only dealing with these two audio tracks right here. Let's talk about the, you know, the audio effects. So the auto-tune that I use is um, auto-tune EFX from Antares. And I love this auto-tune. It's great, but it does cost money. So I used to use a free auto-tune called um, M Auto Pitch from Melda Productions. And that auto-tune was great. It was the best free auto-tune that I've ever used. And I used that auto-tune for about a year. So if you don't have an auto-tune and the reason is because you don't want to pay any money, definitely go check out M Auto Pitch and snag that auto-tune for free because it's great. All right, let me show you how to make this vocal template. We're going to go over here. First thing you're going to do is you are going to snag an audio effect rack and drag it in here. So there we go. I'm just going to recreate this template right here. So the first thing that I throw on my template is my low cut. I'm just going to turn all these off. Is my low cut EQ. And what this EQ is doing is it's cutting the lows. That's all it's doing. So we're just going to throw on an EQ8 and let's give a listen to our vocals. I thought you would be my best. See these lows down here? We don't really want those. You can't really hear them that well, but when you cut out the lows, it just makes your vocals a lot cleaner and a lot crisper, even if you can't really recognize it. So let's give it a listen with the EQ. I you'd be there we go. I you'd it just sounds a lot cleaner. All right, and before I get onto this compression working on the peaks, um, you might be, you know, looking through this template and saying, you know, where's the gate? because a lot of artists like to use gate in their recordings and you know I think gates are great I think they can use be used well but I believe that when I use gates on my vocals sometimes there can be some cut-ins and some cutouts that just sound really artificial and sound like a gate so what I do is I just don't use a gate at all and you know I'm gonna, gonna drag let's slow down a little bit I'm going to drag out my um, first line out to here. So as you can see, let's our vocals are already soloed. You can hear a little bit of that background noise, and then I come in. So what a gate would do, let's throw on a gate if I can find one. There we go. So what a gate would do is if we lowered it down to here maybe. There we go. That's what the gate's doing. It's taking out this audio right here because what the gate does is it says okay if um, the vocals or your volume doesn't pass this line right here just don't even let the volume be a thing just delete it so you can't hear any volume until you get right here because right here when I sing I from from I thought when I sing I the vocals are gonna be passing this line and it's gonna be allowing those vocals to be there so you know it doesn't sound that bad. So if you want to throw on a gate and not do what I do, which is kind of tedious, then throw on the gate. But what I do, let's delete that. What I do is after recording my vocals, let's say they would look like that. What I'll do is I'll turn my grid off and then I'll just swipe it over here. There we go. Now that's, that's a clean start right there. And then I come over here and swipe this. And be sure to use these um, fades. If you can't find the fades, they're usually just right here. You can grab them. 
Uh, if you can't find them, it's probably because you have your automation on. So just turn that off and then you can use these fades. So I don't use gates. If you want to use a gate, use a gate. All right, now we're on to this peak compression and what this peak compression is going to be doing, it is going to be just boosting our volume basically. So let's throw on a compressor. There we go. And then we're going to go right here to this peak monitor thing don't really know what to call it and then we're gonna grab our ratio turn it pretty high lower the attack and then raise the release a little bit and now we're just gonna listen to our vocals I thought and look for this yellow line right here I thought okay the yellow line would be my bed. is like getting around here okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this guy and lower it until we get around where that yellow line would have been I thought there we go. You'd be my best friend. You want these lines together. Um, if they're far away like this, the compressor isn't really doing anything. And if the yellow line is past this guy, I thought your vocals are gonna sound bad. So try to get the both of the yellow lines. I thought you'd be my best friend. Try to get them close to each other. Um, Try to make the smaller one behind the bigger one. All right, next up we got this big problems EQ. So what we're doing with this EQ is we are turning off um, bad frequencies. So we're scanning our vocals and we're trying to find frequencies that hurt your ear basically. So I found you know five frequencies that I did that I didn't like when I scanned my vocals. Let's just you know. Let me show you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna do a little low cut right here. I'm not gonna make it go past my first low cut. Let's go to one of these knobs. You're gonna wanna turn it into this guy, the little circle guy, and then you're gonna want your Q to be pretty high. So let's go right here, I thought... listen to our vocals, and when you raise this, it's gonna be boosting that frequency wherever it is. I thought you'd be my best friend. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to find frequencies that when they're boosted this high, they're just really annoying. So the way you're going to do that is you're going to press this little headphone guy, and now as you drag this, the only frequencies that you're going to hear is where this knob is. So let's give it a listen. And now we're just going to go through the EQ, go through all the frequencies, try to find... A frequency that we don't like. Alright, I think I found a frequency that I'm not a big fan of. Let's give it a listen. So if you ever hear that ringing and it's kind of, you know, prolonged, what you're going to want to do is grab your gain and then lower it just a bit. You don't want to lower it all the way down because then it's just going to be taking out that frequency completely. And that's not going to sound good. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to do the same thing. Make sure your Q is pretty high. And then we're going to go to where this was. And now we're just going to keep going down. Found another frequency right here. So I'll just lower that. So that's what this uh, EQ is going to be doing. You're going to want to sweep this. Go left and right a few times. Try to find as many frequencies that you don't like. And then lower them just a bit. So big problems there we go all right next up we got a glue compressor and the glue compressor is basically going to be doing the same thing as the peak compressor it's just going to be lowering the vocals a little bit the parts that are super loud are going to be um, dampened and then overall the vocals are going to be boosted just a bit it's basically just tightening the vocals you know yeah so the way we're going to do it is we're just going to lower this threshold. I thought you'd be my you don't want this knob getting past 10 um, because it's just going to be taking away too much. I so. You'd be my bed. so that's great. It's taking away some of the boosted volume, but we want to make up for the dBs that we took away when we were compressing the vocals. So. Let's just put it at 2, and now it's going to be boosting the vocals 2 dBs. Alright, we already threw on 4 audio effects. Um, 
None of these audio effects are like adding sauce. None of them are adding reverb or delay or anything interesting like that. They're just cleaning up the vocals really well. So let's give a listen without these four audio effects. I thought you would be. All right, with them. I thought you would be my best. Already, even with these four, you know, bland audio effects, our vocals are becoming crisper and cleaner and louder. All right, next up we got this EQ called Brights. It's basically just like another EQ where you can scan and take away frequencies that you don't like. Um, I call it the Brights because I like to boost my highs just a little bit, um, just to give the vocals, that's not how you spell Brights. There we go. Just to give the vocals a little bit more um, presence in the mix, just to boost those highs a little bit. So that's what this EQ is doing. Not a lot. The last audio effect that we are going to be throwing in before we get into the sauce. So the sauce is the reverb and then the delays if you end up throwing those on. I'm going to talk about that after this de-esser. So de-essers are very important in vocals. My S's are very loud. They're very, you know, tinny would be a good way to say them. They're very sharp. So what the de-esser does is it's going to be taking away those super syllably S's. It's going to be, you know, lowering that volume. And the reason that we are using a multiband dynamics audio effect, so come over here, multiband dynamics. There we go. The reason we're using this multiband dynamics um, is because I don't want to just throw in an EQ and then find where my S's are and lower that frequency like that. Because what that's going to do is it's gonna take away this whole frequency even when I'm not saying my S's. And then what this multiband dynamics tool is doing is I'm gonna raise this high up to 15 kilohertz and then I'm gonna raise this low up to three. So between three kilohertz and 15 kilohertz, between that frequency range, if there's ever a volume that goes past a certain threshold, that volume is gonna be lowered but it's not going to be lowering the volume constantly. It's only going to be lowering the volume whenever there's a note or a volume that passes a certain, certain threshold. And between that frequency range, the only kind of sound that's going to be passing that threshold is when you say your S's. So I'm just going to go right here. I'm going to get this guy. I'm going to drag him down. So you want to see red. You don't want to, you know, drag it down that much. I'd say drag it down like that. Now we're going to listen to this line right here and you're going to see whenever I say S's there's going to be a little line right here and it's going to pass this mark right here but it's going to be pushed down. I thought you'd be my best friend. Let's go to this other line right here. I guess we there's another one. Just ended up more than that. All right now we're moving on to the sauce. And the reason that we want the sauce to be its own little group is because we want the audio effects that are in the sauce, which is reverb, delay, some more compression, we want those audio effects to be all hit at once. So they're going to be vertical like this, and it's just going to hit all the audio effects at once. And if you look over here, these audio effects right here are one by one. So it's going to hit the low cut first, and then it's going to hit the peaks, and then the big problems, and then the glue, and then the brights, and then the de and then it's going to hit all the sauce at once because these are vertical. And the way that you can make this little group is you're just going to throw in another audio effect rack in your audio effect rack. So here's our group. You're going to want to click this little list guy. There we go. And then you're going to right click, create chain. So the first chain is the dry chain, and what the dry chain has on it is nothing because it's dry. So it's gonna hit this dry chain which has nothing on it. And then we're gonna throw on two more chains. One is gonna be called our regular comp which is regular compression. And then our other one is gonna be called our glue comp which is the glue compression. So we're gonna go over here to our regular comp. I'm gonna grab this compressor, drag it over, voila. And you can just drag your compressor like that into this, there we go. So here's our first compressor, compressor, not compressor. I don't think that's a word. Um, and it's our regular, com oh, I threw it in the glue. So we're gonna wanna switch that. There we go. So let's solo this compression. I 
you'd be my best friend. You can tell that it's doing a lot right now. So it's really squashing those vocals. And the reason we want it super squashed and 100% dry wet is because we only want these compressors to be adding vocals where it's safe to add vocals. There's that compressor. We're gonna go to the glue now. There we go, throw that in. Let's give it a listen. It's doing the same thing. So here's our dry. And then with both of these, a lot louder. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna lower the volume. I lowered the volume with my other chain. I did it uh, negative 7.9 and then negative 5.8. There we go. And then on top of that, we're gonna use these guys. So this is your panning. So let's solo our dry. Our dry is in the center, which is what C means. It means the center. And then if I move it to the right. I thought you'd be my best. So we want the dry vocals to be smack dab in the middle. And then we want the rest of these chains to be moved left and right, which is going to spread out our vocals nicely. So let's move this regular compressor 8 to the right. So negative 8. And then this one's going to be 8 to the right. I meant 8 to the left on the other one. There we go. All right, so here's what we have so far for... That's not how you spell that. There we go. The sauce. I thought you'd be my best friend. All right, next up we got these two reverbs right here. One is the Forest Floor Preset Reverb from Ableton. And then this one is the Oil Barrel Preset Reverb from Ableton. So I'm just going to drag both of these like this. There we go. There we go. Um, you could have just created a chain like this, right click, and then control R to name it forest floor. And then you could have gone to you, your reverbs. There we go, and then go to special. Here's forest floor, and then here's oil barrel. And you would just drag your forest floor into that chain. There we go. There we go. All right, so let's solo our forest floor. As you can see, it's gonna be 10 to the left. And here is our forest floor. And the reason that we have it on 100% is because we can. Because we have so many chains, we can make them super quiet. As you can see, both of these reverbs are negative 13 dBs, which is lowering them quite a bit. So we can have it 100% reverb to add that, you know, that full presence, but not a lot of volume to it. So in this forest floor chain, after this forest floor, after the reverb, I throw on a de -esser to take off some of these S's. As you can see, it's working over there. And then we're gonna throw on this EQ8 to take off most of these lows right here. There we go, there's our forest floor. And then the oil barrel is kind of the same thing, but it's kind of opposite. So as you can see, it's 10 to the right, which is parallel to my forest floor. Forest floor is 10 to the left. And as you can see, I have a high cut on this oil barrel. So the oil barrel is kind of focused on the low reverby stuff. And then the forest floor is focused on the high reverby stuff. So after the reverb, we throw on a saturator, another de just like the forest floor, and then an EQ8. And we're going to trim off some of those highs like that. Now let's give a listen. Definitely sounds different from the forest floor. So together, both of them sound like this. Very reverby. Um, let's unsolo all of them. So with the sauce now, this is what our vocals sound like. I thought that you'd be my best friend. Sounds great. Sometimes I like to throw on delay, so I'm just gonna show you how I do that. I'm gonna create a chain, call it delay, and then I'm gonna go to my delay. There we go. Throw it in here. I guess we we're gonna solo it. Um, we want it focused on the highs like that, and then we want it to be ping ponged. So the left and the right are gonna be bouncing back and forth, and we don't want the feedback very powerful because we don't want a lot of echoes. So so we want the feedback to be low, so there's not a lot of echoes, but we want the dry wet to be 100%, so you can't hear the actual lines. You can only hear the delayed lines. So let's give it a listen. I guess we, I guess we just ended 
And then what I like to do is throw on another EQ and just take out some of the lows. So now the delayed vocals are only going to be on the highs. And then we're just going to lower it, let's say, 9 dB. So let's give a listen to our vocals now. I guess we just ended up more than that. All right, and that's it. Um, after the sauce, we have an extra EQ, which is just going to be another low cut. And it's going to be taking any lows that, you know, might have been created by all of these plugins, and it's just going to be wiping them. So there we go. I'm going to delete what I just made. Here is our Zol vocal template. Pretty easy to make. Not a lot of moving parts. Not that complex. Um, but it does a lot. So let's turn it off. Give a listen to our vocals. I thought you'd be my best. Turn it on. I thought you'd be my best friend. I guess we. All right, next up we got our background vocals, and the background vocals are easy. It's literally the same thing that I have on my, my main vocals, which is auto-tune, and then my template. So let's go right here. So we have the auto-tune, the template, and then we have extra reverb because we want the background vocals to be, you know, spacey. Um, we have a de after that extra reverb because, you know, when you throw on that forest floor and some of the reverbs, it's going to make those S's super sharp and annoying so we're going to throw in another de and then we're going to eq it again and take out a lot of these lows so now the background vocals are mainly focused on the highs and that's going to you know differentiate your background vocals from your main vocals which is necessary and then another big difference is our main vocals as you can see i only lowered them by 1.5 db which is not a lot but our background vocals i lowered them by negative 8 db because we don't want the background vocals to be louder than our regular vocals. So let's give a listen to the background vocals. Sounds good. Let's pair it with our main vocals so you can tell the difference between the two of them. I thought you'd be my best friend. I guess we just ended up. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of just repeating the lines that I say in my main vocals, and I'm adding ad-libs, basically. Singy ad-libs. That sounds great. Um, here's my verse. Yeah, we made in the classroom. Still remember the there we go, it sounds great. It just sounds like the chorus, basically. Until we get to this part, which I said I would talk about later. So this is what's called vocal doubling. I like to use it a lot. And what it is, is it's just me recording the same verse two times. So let's just turn this one off. So that's what I recorded, and then I did the same thing again. So both of them together now sound like this. Which, you know, sounds nice, but it's not there yet. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to move one of the lines 20 to the left, and then you're going to move one of the lines 20 to the right. And that's just going to make this doubling sound sound so cool. Alright, so there is that. Let's drag in this little vocal riser that I talked about earlier. So I like to use these risers a lot. They sound sick, they sound like professional, and it's pretty easy to make them actually. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag all of these guys. We're gonna drag them all the way over here because we don't want them to deal with anybody. Now we're just going to delete most of it except for the first little syllable that I say, uh. which is I. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these fades out. Uh, uh, uh. 
The reason we only want this one syllable is because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a bunch of reverb to this and giving it a long tail, and then we're going to be reversing the tail. We just want that syllable right there, and then we're just going to go to our reverbs. Let's try forest floor. Two things you need to focus on, definitely make the size very big and make the decay time very long because that's going to give you that long tail. Um, we can raise the pre-delay up maybe a little bit and then give it both a low cut and a high cut. There we go. And now, let's give it a listen. You hear that long tail that I just made? Sounds great. So we're just going to insert an audio track and we're going to take it out of this group and then we're going to click this guy right here and we're gonna go to main vocals. So now this track is gonna be recording this group. So hit record and then hit record up here. There we go, let it draw out. All right, let's solo what we just recorded. There we go, sounding great. Now let's hit this reverse button. Reverse, there we go. We did it. So let me just drag this over here. And you want it to you want to position it a little bit past um, the first syllable that you're saying. Like that. So they blend together. So let's turn off the actual vocal riser and let's give a listen to what I just made. There we go. That is how you make a vocal riser. It's fun. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've been recording for an hour and ten minutes, so I have a lot of editing to do, but I was planning on making this video long. I wanted to talk about a lot of things, and I want this to be a really solid video for people who want to learn how to make a vocal template, learn how to mix vocals. They can always come to this video and skip to different parts and learn different things about my template and how I do my vocals. Um, again, my way isn't the right way. This is just how I do it, but I hope this helped you. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned something. That's what I try to say. All right, again, this beat was made strictly with my Indie Wave sound pack. If you want to check that out, the link is down below. If you want to check out the contest, just check out my last video. The full song for this song, it's called Best Friend. It's on SoundCloud also. The link is also down below if you want to check that out. Have a good... Have a good one. Peace. I thought...